Praise God. So good to see each and every one here as they make their way in. Praise God. So uh, good to see those that are watching live stream. Praise God. I want you to know that I love you, but praise God more than that. I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. Do got a few announcements that I want to make. Uh, ladies, don't forget, um, tomorrow night is the ladies' meeting at 6, 6.30 in the fellowship hall. Bring finger foods. And May the 22nd is Feed My Sheep. See Sister Cherie if you would like to help. Be praying for that. And uh, what all goes into that, praise God. Is there any more announcements tonight? Any more announcements? Praise God. Let's be praying for a pastor, first lady, as they're gone. Uh, as he journeys in evangelizing uh, in Kentucky, praise God. Uh, let's keep uh, them in prayer. Uh, pray for traveling mercies. Amen. I know that uh, some has gone with them. So let's keep them in our prayers. Praise God. Praise God. Any dang else. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, church. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just praise you and we thank you for this night. Dear Lord, Father, God, Dear Lord, Father, God, just touch the man of God tonight. Dear Lord, Father, God, as, as he brings the word, dear Lord, Father, God, anoint his lips, dear Lord, Father, God, as your word is already anointed. Dear Lord, Father, God, just be with Pastor David, dear Lord, Father, God, and Sister Lisa as they are gone. Just touch him during this evangelistic time, dear Lord, Father, God. Even the word for the hour, dear Lord, Father God. Dear Lord, Father God, to see souls saved, dear Lord, Father God, to see people changed. And dear Lord, Father God, we just give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. And the church says, Amen. Your presence 
When I'm at your throne, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones, you're the one. The one that I desire. You're the all-consuming fire. 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 Ever burning, all-consuming fire. Fire, fire, you baptize me with your spirit and fire. In your presence, when I'm at your throne, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones, you're the one, the one that I desire. You're the all-consuming fire in your presence. When I'm at your throne, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones, you're the one, the one that I desire. You're the all-consuming fire in your presence. When I'm at your throne, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones, you're the one, the one that I desire. You're the all-consuming fire, fire. Fire, fire, ever burning, all consuming fire, fire, fire. You baptize me with your spirit and fire. Beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tune Till I met you And I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried I, it was my tune till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, out of the grave, into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old may knew. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. Into your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, the chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. So when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. 
you call my name. And I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name. Out of the darkness. Into There's so much we have lost As we look down the road Where all the prodigals have walked And one by one the enemy Has whispered lies And led them off as slaves But I know that you are God Yours is the victory we know that there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we step into the valley on a prey. We call out to drive us from a light, from a light. We call God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward sons. And by your spirit, breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can say, you alone can say. Come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Look back the ashes, let us see an army rise. And we call out to dry bones, come alive. Mira. 
right. And we call out to drive on come alive. So breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe. Oh breath of God, now breathe. Oh breath of God, now breathe. So breathe, oh breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. So breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. So breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. Oh, breath of God, now breathe. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. No matter the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to drive bones come alive. We call out to drive bones come This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very word spoken to me and I This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoke to me. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Amen. Can we give our praise team another round of applause? Amen. I know, I know we're missing, we're missing two ladies up there, but, but it is something, it is something awesome when you got Christians that come together and, and can sing and pray, help us to be able to praise God. Cause I can't sing. Amen. I sound like a dog howling. Amen. Y'all would, y'all would sure enough be praising if I was on the praise team. Like get him all, get him all. Man, I tell you, it's an honor. It's an honor tonight to introduce this man of God. Uh, my, I've not known Brother Larry May for for years and years, but my first memory of Brother May, my wife, come to me after service and she said, "Who was that man that was praying for me?" I said, "Well, I don't know." I was praying myself. Hey, <laughs> she said, well, he gave me his handkerchief. She said, I felt God all over him. And time rolls on. Brother May's been coming pretty, pretty regular. And, and I've grown to, I've grown to know Brother May. And I've grown to be around him. I, I, I've been in the altars with him. I've been, I've, I've listened to him minister. I, I've ministered to him. I, it, it's, Amen. Glory to God. It's something. <laughs> we even sat side by side and had our feet washed together. I know what Peter meant 
when they said you ain't washing my feet. Amen. I know what he meant. It's a humbling experience. But I'd lie as Brother May comes. I, a man of God, a mighty man of God, oh, I'd fight with him to the end of the day. Amen. Glory to God. Brother May, have your liberty in the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm nothing but a vessel. I'm nothing but a man. But I am so blessed to be here tonight. Thank you, praise team. Again, that is so beautiful. His holy presence is in the house tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Are you happy to be here tonight? Oh, I didn't hear you. Are you happy to be here tonight? Hey, we may be few in numbers, but I tell you, we're great in the Lord tonight. I feel the presence of the Lord in here tonight. I'm going to tell you, they could have sung out one more time. I believe I would have got lost in the spirit of the Lord in here. Woo! I feel like the Lord was wanting to do something in here. If we just surrender and let him have his way here tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Just breathe on me, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, breathe on me. Lord, let me sit underneath the shade of the tree and just meditate upon your spirit and you just breathe on me. Lord, clear my mind. Lord, clear my heart. Lord, clear my conscience. Just breathe on me. Man, I can preach right down in the middle of that. Oh, hallelujah. I got to talk to Brother Dave this afternoon for a few moments. They said they had a powerful service this morning, a wonderful service. He thought something was wrong when I called him. He didn't get the voicemail. So he had heard him call me back. He thought there was something wrong. He didn't think I was going to be able to make it. I said, no, brother, I just wanted to call and just check on y'all. See, that's the thing. Sometimes we just need to call and just check on them, you know. Lift them up and say, hey, let the Lord use you in a mighty way. I heard y'all had a wonderful service here this morning. I would have loved to have been here with you, but I was in another church this morning. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord's going to do here tonight. So I got my old Bible tonight. So I normally don't preach out of it. It's been a long time since I preached out of it. So it'll have to fall apart tonight. So, but at least I know I can find pages in it. I thank the Lord my wife got me a new Bible and everything, but I just ain't got used to it yet. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing like the old one. And I got a message on my heart tonight. I'm just going to give an altar call before the service even starts. Because if you need to pray tonight, you come and pray. You're not going to hinder the service. You're not going to hinder what God's wanting to do. But I want you to obey the Lord and let the Lord touch your heart here tonight. I ain't that a thought beyond the grave. You know, there's some things, I don't know, you've heard Brother Dave say it's hard to preach some things. But there's some things that's got to be preached. There's some things that's got to be preached. Jesus didn't preach on love all the time. He laid it out plain as it could be. Sin is sin. I don't care how you paint the kettle black, it's still black. A lot of people don't understand that, do they, brother? You can paint it blue, but you scratch the blue off of it, it's still black underneath. And it's, not, it's not pure till it's been washed in the blood and made white as snow. Oh, hallelujah. In the book of Luke tonight, chapter 16, Verse 19 through 31. I'm like Brother Dave, and some of these big long words, I might, get, might mess them up so y'all overlook me. I'm about like him. I got a sixth grade education, so. But I'm working on a master's in the Lord. How about that? Somebody didn't get that, did they? I'm working on my master's degree. It's coming a day when I will be perfected and I'll leave out of here. I won't have to preach no more. I get to see the preacher of all preachers. I get to see the nail scars in his hands. Oh, hallelujah. Sister Mary, I didn't wear a watch, so you had to keep up with me. If I go past an hour, throw the book at me. How about that? I seen you sit there and look at me and say, I'm timing. <laughs> God's a mess with you, Sister Mary. In the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19, when you're there, say amen. I know you're there. You're looking behind my shoulder. You're already there with me, so praise the Lord. It said, there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared simplicity. Did I say that correctly? There you go. Some, uh, Y'all got that. Praise the Lord. I don't know who said it, but praise the Lord. Every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid 
at his gate full of sores, and he des and desiring to feed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But thou he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from, oh glory, hallelujah, which, which, which would, praise the Lord, I'm going to get this out here in a minute. Excuse me, y'all. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to get it out. Where are we at? I'll turn around and look at this, and I don't know why I can't see that. It is said beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from this? Ain't you think, God, that there's a gulf there? Because he said there would be no more tears in heaven. If, there was, if you could see down from heaven into hell, you'd just be weeping all the time. Mm. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, They hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, again for leading us in this house tonight. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's here tonight, Lord. And we just pray tonight, Lord, you just minister to the hearts here tonight, Lord. Thank you for the songs, Lord, that's come forth tonight, Lord. And, Lord, you know your children tonight, Lord. You know, Lord, what's upon their hearts, Lord, what's upon their burdens, Lord, what's besetting them, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just touch, Lord, lift, Lord, heal. Lord, touch Brother David and Sister Lisa tonight, Lord, as they're in Kentucky, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and let the Spirit of God set upon them, Lord. Let the let them have a mighty move of God there, Lord. Let souls be saved, Lord. Let souls be touched. And, Lord, we ask you tonight, Lord, the same here in this house tonight, Lord. Move, Lord, in a way, Lord, we've never seen, Lord, in a way we've never known. Lord, touch the ones tonight, Lord, a slide feed, Lord. Move upon them, Lord, as well. And, Lord, just have your way, Lord. And we give you all the praise, Lord, in your precious name we say amen. We see two beggars here. One big on this side of the grave and one beg in hell. One laid at the rich man's table day and day hungry from the crumbs that fell from his table. Brother, he didn't ask for the whole loaf of bread. He didn't ask for a slice of pie. He didn't ask for the butter to go up on the bread. He just wanted it enough to feel the hunger in his heart, in his stomach. Man didn't he have enough compassion on him to love him. Man cared nothing about him. Even only the dogs licked his sores. Beyond the grave. It said he had died. So it tells me there he knew the Lord as his Lord and Savior. It said that the angels just picked him up from where he was at at his death stage. The pain that tormented, the pain that tormented his body, the sores that he had, the hunger that he had in the physical sense. At that moment when the breath that God had blessed him with left his body, he no longer needed the hunger no more. He no longer felt the pain of this life anymore. He no longer had the sores of the dogs had to lick anymore. And it said that angels picked him up and carried him and laid him in the bosom of Abraham. 
At this time, in the stage of this point, this time, Christ had not ascended into heaven, back into heaven where we're going now. At that time, it was a place of paradise where the souls had stayed. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh glory, hallelujah, Jesus. And it said the other man had died as well. Oh, hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it said, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body to be in the presence with the Lord. Think about it tonight. I said these altars are open through this service tonight. I was Lazarus. He called me from the grave. Understand there's a day coming. You will lay flat on your back. There will be people weeping in the morning and crying over you. Because they knew the life that you lived. But actually you knew the life that you lived. Oh. So you can hide everything from us. But you can't hide nothing from God. Oh, praise the Lord. You see this rich man here. He said he died. Let's take a moment and look at this man. Brother, back in the book of Luke. You got me back here? It said in the rich man, he died as well. And it said, the, I got some notes here. And it said, Oh, praise the Lord, y'all. <laughs> I got lost in my writing. Hang on, I'm going to get where I'm at. You ain't none of you done that, have you? It said the rich man found torment beyond the grave. He found remorse and despair in seeing the righteous and the godly, whom they have despised now clothed in glory and immortality, eternal life, and all the bliss of God. Can you imagine looking up in the depths of hell and seeing your loved one Clothed in all the righteousness. They done put on the they done put off the mortal into the immortality. They done come Christ like. They come known as He is known. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. They done put on the white robe. Walking around praising the Lord. Bowing down at his feet, worshiping him in spirit and truth. Can you imagine looking up the point? And seeing this, ain't this just enough torment as it is? This love was set beside you for years. This was your spouse. This was your mate. Maybe this was a, a friend or a co-worker. Maybe this was somebody you knew. Maybe it was a real close friend of yours. Hey, maybe it was a church member of the church. Oh, hallelujah. He's quiet in here tonight. Lord, have your way. The hordes of the, the very evil that they know has damned their souls and put them in torment. The life that they lived, the life they chose to live, the life that they wanted to live, and put them in a place of torment. The life they chose to live. God didn't twist you on. God didn't put you there. That's too many people blaming God for it. God didn't put you there. You made your own choice to live there. You made your own choice to live life you wanted to live, how you wanted to live. You know, they say it takes 21 days to, to create a habit, become a habit. But some things it takes a lifetime to get over. But I'll tell you, with God, all things are possible. You don't have to live the life you want to live. You don't have to keep hiding them things in the closet. It's time to open it up and get the things of ungodliness out of your house. I'm not talking about your physical house. I'm talking about your spiritual house. Because them little things will drive you into the pits of hell where you don't need to be. Eternal desire for the good that would have freed from torment. Can you imagine being tormented by this? Memory of the lost opportunities of life that could have caused them to be with the redeemed. Hallelujah. Lost opportunities. 
as he was looking up from the pits of hell, the things that's going through his mind. Tormented. He said, the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not. And he's sitting up there seeing this man that he had tormented all his life. He's seen this man that he treated so badly. He's seen this man that he'd run down, he put down. He probably even used him for a footstool. He probably even used him a few times just to gain wealth for himself. And he's sitting up there looking at him, and he's no more with sores all over his body. He's no more in pain. He's no more hungry. He's sitting there in a state of righteousness, so beautiful, and peace and comfort. And he's tormented by what he's seeing. See, so, y'all, everybody thought just hell was just fire and brimstone and just a worm and gnawing and biting, didn't you? There's a lot of things that will torment your mind. I heard this morning, I was sitting there watching TV this morning, there was a man that come across the TV. I'm not going to mention his name. But he made a statement on there. It, just, it brought tears to my eyes. He said he was he, he was funding some kind of how do you say it funding some kind of anti-religious act or something like that. And he said he was one of the biggest atheists there was, and he said he had no fear in his heart of dying going to hell. I sat there and started crying. I said, "There's a day he's gonna regret the words that he said." He thinks it's all laugh. He thinks it's all jokes. He thinks it's all funny. He thinks there's nothing to it. He's going to find out there's a day coming. Them words going to torment his mind. Them words going to torment him. As he's looking up crying, have mercy on me. Too late. Have mercy on me. Too late. You turn the deaf ear to the evangelist. You turn the deaf ear to the church. You turn the deaf ear to those that brought the word. You run my people down. You treated everybody wrong. There's no mercy. I gave you a chance while you was living, but you turned your back on me. Regret over deeds committed in which can never be recalled. Absolute hopelessness of escape from eternal misery or all evaluation form to the last degree of suffering. Eternal separation from loved ones or from the redeemed which they can see beyond an impossible gulf. Think about it. He said, send somebody back. Raise him from the dead. He said, they wouldn't believe then. Hey, don't send, don't let my loved ones come into this place where I'm at. Send somebody. They wouldn't hear the prophets. They wouldn't hear the preachers. They wouldn't hear the priests. Maybe raise him from the dead. God raised one from the dead and they're still rejecting him. They're still rejecting him. God gave his only begotten son for every who so believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't come into this world to condemn this world, but he came into this world to save the world. But they're still rejecting him. He's not dead. He's alive. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father right now. He came into this world and no soul would go, have to go to hell. He came into this world and nobody would have to face eternity lost. He came so everybody could be saved. Hell was only created for the devils and the fallen angels. But it said in the book of Isaiah, it said his mouth opened up wider every day. Because there's many that's turning to deaf ear. There's many that's turning to blind eye. There's many that's just turning to cold hearts. There's many today in time we're living in this, this walking away from the faith. There's many today that shut the Bible, that stood in the pulpits and preached, and laid it down and walked away, denouncing that Christ even exist. But there's a day coming. They all had to stand in judgment for what they've done. Because it's been brought forth to us. It said, with once appointed unto man, death, then judgment. 
you'll have to give account for your life. Regret over the over their bad example in life that has caused friends and loved ones to be damned. Ever, ever deepening remorse for not listening to the word of God and for not spending their time, talents, and money to propagate it so that they Hmm. We're called to be laborers into this field. We're called to be witnesses for the Lord. We're all called to be ministers. We all have a testimony. We all overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. There's people we need to reach. There's people that need to know the Lord. There's people that need to know the Lord is there. It's not just for us to hoard it all in, bottle it all up, keep it to ourselves. You know, it's time that we smear some of this love on somebody else. It's time we just get it all over somebody like peanut butter and jelly. Just, just rub all over them. Maybe some mayonnaise on a burger. How about that on a mitre sandwich? We just need to smear it all over them. Somebody needs to know Jesus the way he, I know Jesus. I can't reach some people like other people can because they've already laid a mark on me. But you can take some people, man, they're just people that are called outcasts. They can reach people that I cannot reach. You know, I can fish all day long, brother, but I can't catch them. But Lord can send the right man along with the right bait. And he knows how to catch them. You see, a lot of people don't understand. People put a mark on a minister or a preacher. <laughs> Y'all didn't know what, did you? See, your brother back here smiling back here. He understands what I'm talking about. But, you know, we need to reach these people before it's too late. And if there's anything in our lives that stand between us and the Lord, we need to get rid of it. You know, I don't point fingers at nobody. If I do, I'm pointing at myself. There's things in our closets we need to clean out. There's things we've been holding on for a lifetime we need to get rid of. There's things God's been dealing with our hearts about, hey, this thing you don't need to need anymore. Lord said, hey, I'm going to come by with a garbage truck. You just put it in the back of it. I'll take care of it from there. You just leave it alone. Don't let this thing pull you away from me. Don't let this thing pull you away from me. You know, the Bible tells us he would not separate his love from us, but it did not say we wouldn't separate ourselves from him. It also teaches us that he would never divorce his bride, but it didn't say we wouldn't divorce him. Because we can allow little things in our lives put us in hell. Oh, it got quiet on that, didn't it? I touched the nerve there. I felt it. We need to be reaching. We need to be crying. We need to be repenting daily. Lord, help me. Lord, I can't do it on my own. Lord, I've held on to this thing for years. This root of bitterness is just growing in my life, and I can't get rid of it. Lord, I know, Lord, I know you as my Lord and Savior, but I don't want this thing to cause me to a point where it separates me or causes me to lose my salvation. And I'll be damned to hell. And I'm looking up from the pits of torment and already seeing my family there, and I can't be with them. And this man was crying out, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. As he was burning and being tormented in the book of Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46. Praise the Lord. It said, when the Son of Man shall come in his, in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Oh, Brother Dave preached on part of this Wednesday night, didn't he? The coming of the Lord. Confirmation again, the Lord is coming. He's coming. The angels, what did the angels say? Told his disciples, why sit, why stand here, why stand here amongst the dead. Why they say, why stand here amongst the dead seeking you to living? The same Jesus that you see ascending is coming back. This is the words of Christ here. They're in red. He's coming. And he's coming back for his bride has made herself adorned and made herself ready. 
And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Oh, hallelujah. You got quiet in here, didn't you? You got quiet in here, don't I, did How many open arms we have in here tonight? How many people we got with buckets in the well here tonight? Whew. I didn't say you was Christ. I said you was Christ-like. How many open arms we got in here? How many shut mouths do we have? Just speak. I'll sit here and listen. I won't spread it. I'll take it to the altar where it needs to be for you. Oh, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Think about it. What did he say? For I was hungry. And you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Hallelujah. He took me in. He stood at the door and knocked. I felt the Spirit of God dealing with my heart. I opened up to him and he came in and sat with me. Oh, hallelujah. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Praise the Lord. I was sick. Thank God he come unto me. While everybody else was fearing life, he met me on my bed. When others were scared to come into the home where I was at, he was there with me. We went through a pandemic. They say we're still going through it. I say we're open. You can believe how you want to believe. But how many did you reach out to? I don't mean with a can of Lysol. I don't mean with a set of face mask. How many did you reach out to and say, I'm praying for you? Oh, I don't know what I don't want to come from. Lord, forgive me if I just said something I shouldn't have. How many, how many sick people did we reach out to? I'm just a guilty as well. Aren't you glad that he was there with you? When you didn't think you could overcome it and you didn't think you were going to make it through it, ain't you glad he was there by your bedside and he just kept saying, you got this, son. You got this, daughter. You're coming through this. I love you that much. I led you to it. I'm going to bring you through it. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to get where I need to be. I'm going to get through this in a minute, Sister Mary. You just be thinking of a song, okay, sis? He said, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. I thank the Lord there was times in my life when I didn't have nothing else in my life that he sent people into my life that helped me. I thank the Lord for, for handing down clothes. I am so blessed to have them. I know a lot of people turn their nose up to him and walk away from him. I thank the Lord for every one of them is on my back. I'm proud to say, and I can say it with love and everything else. I thank the Lord for goodwill and salvation army and all the rest of them. What somebody else didn't want, I'm glad to have. I know some people are embarrassed by that thought, but praise the Lord. Somebody else laid it down so I can pick it up and carry it on. Thank the Lord that I got something on my back. Thank the Lord that I dress decently. Nothing against nobody else or nothing else. Thank the Lord that I live the life that I live. Thank the Lord that he sent the Holy Spirit that cleaned me up. Thank he, thank the Lord that he got a hold of me. Because I'll tell you, there's been a lot of times in my life people have looked at me because of the way I dress. I'll just be honest with you. When I was in the world, I dressed my best for the world. 
because I want to be seen by the world. I don't want to be seen by the church, but I want the Lord to see what he's done in me. And I thank the Lord that he cleaned me up. I don't care how you dress, how you want to be, praise the Lord. That's between you and the Lord, praise the Lord. I just know the life that I came from. I don't want to live like that no more. I thank the Lord that he sent me some handy down clothes. I thank the Lord he sent somebody in my, in my life that loved me enough. They wasn't willing and scared to help me when I was down. I think he sent a praying brother, a praying sister in my life said, hey, hey, I may not have much in my house, but you can have part of what I have. That's the way I want to be. I may not have much, but I'll sure bless you with what I got. My back pocket, but I'll tell you one thing, you won't leave my house hungry. If you do, it's because you want it to. I'll sure set a meal before you. This shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw with thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, when saw we thee a and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee, or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one, these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Oh, hallelujah. But, there ain't a but here, but have you ever noticed that you're going through the Bible and everything seems like it's such a blessing? Then there's, then there's this little old three-letter word that pops up in there. Got a big old B on the, in the beginning of it. Oh, Lord, I just got my blessing, but you just throw the but in there. You ever seen one of them? How many of you studied the Bible and read through it, have you? Thought everything was hunky dory, everything was glorious, everything was good. Then the Lord said, Whoop. Oh, we got to stop. You got to see the other side of this. There's the best side. You got to think life beyond the grave. Is it eternal or is it death? When I take my last breath, will I stand into the presence of the Lord? Will I put on the immortality? Or will I, or will the devil, the demons of hell pull me into hell? So unto them on the left hand, I put in my pocket, got to see you looking, Brother Jarvis. I almost picked up my left hand, he looked at me. And the king, then he shall say also unto them on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed. And the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. See, it was not prepared for us. It was only prepared for the devil and his angels. I'm not talking about the little red man in a, in a pitchfork with a pointed tail on, on, a, on a meat can. I'm talking about Satan himself. I'm talking about the, the head music man in heaven. I'm talking about the head worshiper. I'm talking about a man that thought he had, or I'm talking about an angel, I rephrase that. I'm talking about an angel that thought he had, that he could overpower God. And he found out how big God really was. And God gave him a place. And he said, all them angels that followed you, they're going with you. And that was not created for us. That was created for him. God gave us the greatest creation there ever was, his son, so we could have life beyond the grave and have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. He said, for I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. And you clothed me not, and you clothed me not sick, in a prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, "Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison?" Then shall he answer them, say unto you. 
Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. You know, I want to hear the day when it comes, welcome in good and faithful. And if the Lord lays somebody on my heart, I want to do everything in my part to go to that person, do what I can for that person. I can say, I may not be much into this world. I may not be able to do what you expect me to do, but I'll give you the Jesus within me. I'll share some love with you. Not ever, I can't do everything, you know what I'm saying? You know, I've always heard I was a jack of all, all trades, but a master of none of them. But whatever I do, I want them to see Jesus within it. If it's putting a commode down, I want them to see Jesus in it. I can't sing, but if I do sing, I want them to hear Jesus in it. If I'm mowing the grass, I want them to see Jesus in it. If I'm sitting at work, that's the hardest place for them to see Jesus. But I had to let Jesus shine. When they're trying to put a bushel over me, and I'm trying to break it off. I want them to see Jesus in me. Whatever I can do. I just want to do what the Lord called me to do. If I'm sitting at my kitchen table eating a fine meal, but the Lord tells me get up and pack it up and carry it down the road, I'm not going to question. I'm going to pack it up and carry it down the road. I don't want nothing in return. My reward's in heaven, not up on this earth. And I know the day comes when I walk, stand before him, and he says, welcome in, good and faithful. Make you ruler over many things. But I don't want to hear him say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Go serve the one you served on earth. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see nobody go to hell because of that. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life, into life eternal. The righteous into life eternal. Sister Mary, I'm going to be closing with Mark chapter 9, verse 42 through 48, if you want to write them down. Praise the Lord. And, wh and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. That's one thing I never want to do is offend one of God's children. I understand that the Holy Spirit convicts you. That's different. I don't want to offend you. I want to love you in love. I want to love you righteously. I want to love you as Christ loved you. And if I ever say anything or do anything, I want you to come to me. If you think I offended you any kind of way, you come to me. Because I don't want to stand before the Lord one of these days. Because I offended somebody. I see a lot of times people get this misunderstood. They get a chip on their shoulders. That preacher offended me. It wasn't a preacher to offend you. It was the Holy Ghost getting a hold of you. That's conviction just tearing your soul apart. Saying there's something that's standing between me and you. You need to get rid of it. But you know they point fingers and say, hey, it's the preacher's fault. And it said, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It said, it's better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. The Lord is not telling you to go out here, take an axe and cut your hand off. What he's trying to tell you, get, water, get rid of whatever you're hanging on to, cut it off. Get rid of it. It's rather go into heaven maimed with a broken spirit than in the hell made whole. There's things, I'm telling you, you're hanging on to, you need to get rid of. There's things you've been hanging on to for a long time, you need to get rid of. There's things you just got held back for a while, you need to cut it off. And he said, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. What are you walking in? What are you walking in? It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. 
I don't know what you're walking into. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've been tromping in. I don't know what you've been playing in. But get rid of it. Next scripture, brother. Amen. Where there, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said, if thy offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. You know, they say the eyes are the windows of your soul. It's not what a man puts in his mouth that defiles the body. It's what's in his heart that defiles the body. You feel the heart with what you see. You can dirty up a house real quick like, brother, if you raise the windows and let the dust blow in. You're not careful what you're watching. Next thing you know, you don't got hooked on it and you can't get away from it. It's time to get rid of it. I'm telling you, hell is hot and heaven sweet. I don't know what your eyes have been wandering about watching and what you may be reading. Get rid of it. Oh, I've got the Holy Ghost in here. I don't know what you're hanging on to. Get rid of it. I don't know what you're walking into. Get rid of it. I'm not judging you and I'm not condemning you. I'm loving you and I'm just here to tell you hell's hot and heaven's sweet. You can believe how you want to believe and how you want to believe and that's between you and the Lord. That's your choice. I'm just going to lay the word of God out before you because I'm going to tell you these are the windows of your soul right here. What you're feeding your soul will determine your destiny. Not and the fire is not quenched. There it is again. Jesus laid it out. I'll be honest with you. You're not going to turn to the ash and just blow away. It don't work that way. It said the rich man, he, he was tormented in the flames. He just cried out for one this little drip of water, brother. He didn't cry out for a glass of water. He didn't cry out for a jug of water. He just cried out for one little drip of water. Just enough to cool his parched tongue. And he's all tormented by what he's seen. He, he was tormented by the life that he had lived up here on this earth. He was tormented by everything he had done. In his mind, he was he was thinking back, maybe, hey, the time the preacher came by, maybe, maybe the time the layman came by, maybe the time somebody just stopped by the house and offered him a loaf of bread just to tell him Jesus loves him. He was tormented by that. Maybe he's tormented by the time somebody told him, hey, he needs to put it down. He can't have it no more. Maybe he was tormented by the time he got mad at everybody in church because they seemed like they was against him. Oh, praise the Lord. Maybe he was maybe he's tormented by every time he felt the spirit dealing with him, he kept blaming on the pastor or blaming on somebody else. Y'all hells are just as real as heaven. Don't brush it off. You can believe it's once saved, always saved. If you want to believe it, I'm against it. Only way I believe it is you live your life holy and acceptable on the Lord. I probably just got in trouble by saying that, didn't I? Because there's a lot of people that believe that. They believe they can be a saint on Sunday and live like a devil all week long. I'm glad to tell you, my word of God tells me there's things you got to put off to be able to put on. My Bible tells me there's things you got to get away from so you can put on the immortality. My Bible tells me there's got to take a place, a change in your life. And he said, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Think about it. Think about the rich man. He was tormented by what he had seen. He was tormented by the life that he was living. He was tormented in the place that he was. But also there was a man there also. He was tormented in this lifetime. He's, he was persecuted. He lived a life that was sorrowful. He lived a life he was sick. He lived a life 
it was bad. But it also tells me that he knew the Lord as well, though. He held on to his faith. When the times got bad, when the times got hard, he held on. When he had nothing to eat and he just cried out, somebody give me something, he held on. Because it said when he took his last breath, it said the angels just scooped him up. God had already had him on the way. He said, my son is about ready to leave this walk of life. Y'all need to be prepared to leave here to go get him. He's lived a life that's tormenting him. He's lived a life where people's rejected him. He's lived a life persecuted. He lived a life of such pain and sickness upon his body. Only the dogs had compassion on him. Go get him. I don't want to see him live like this no more. And they said they just picked him up and laid him in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. Laid him in the bosom of heaven. Think about it. No more pain. No more tears. No more hunger, brother. He said at the table that was spread. It's plenty, 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 plenty. But also, you also got to think about the other man. It sorrows my heart as well that he had to die and go to hell. He's still in hell. You know, as I was going through this, you think about beyond the grave, as I was studying through this and everything else, I've been in many, I don't know, you know, you might think it's kind of creepy, whatever. I've been to several graveyards in my lifetime. What if the grave could talk? What if the grave could talk? What would it say? He was a good old boy. She lived a righteous life. Or would it say, hey, the life I lived, I don't want you to live. Would you listen to it? No, you wouldn't. Because you can only listen to the one that rose from the dead. Many people turn a deaf ear to him. The word's been laid out. How many sermons got to be preached? How many songs got to be sung? How many times you got to walk away? How many times God got to deal with your heart? He told us plainly in the Bible that his spirit would not dwell with mankind for all times. There's only enough times God's going to deal with your heart. Don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That's one sin that cannot be forgiven. These altars are open if you need to pray tonight. If there's anything tonight that's stepped between you and the Lord to lay it on these altars tonight, leave out of here differently than you came in. Maybe you're here tonight. You... I got ministers in the house that will pray with you. I'll pray with you. Thank you, Lord. I'm not afraid. I will. 
weakness Our failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't fill me again There's nothing you, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. And there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you Turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. For ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. The only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. And nothing is better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord.